everyone, welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Easton, and this week we're reading a new chapter in the UAE's publishing ambitions as we visit Sharjah International Book Fair. We'll bring you the highlights of the event, which features more than one and a half million titles and some of the biggest names in regional and international literature. I would recommend writing as a uh, form of therapy for everybody. A little bit later on, we'll examine how a love of learning and a passion for books is being instilled in the youth of the UAE. But first, let me take you inside the 38th edition of SIBF, which drew big crowds to the Emirate to hear from a long list of award-winning writers. Hosted by Sharjah, UNESCO's world book capital for 2019, SIBF opened up under the banner of Open Books, Open Minds. And opening up to the crowds was the Turkish academic, novelist, and 2006 Nobel laureate for literature, Orhan Pamuk, who described writing as his quest for truth and peace of mind. I write because I have never managed to be happy. I write to be happy. Tasked with interviewing Pamuk was Emirati writer and diplomat Omar Saif Gobash, who served as ambassador to France and Russia before becoming an assistant minister for culture and public diplomacy. He's a UK-educated, extensively read, widely-traveled diplomat who's known for his tolerant, moderate views on religion. In support of the written word and in honor of his late father, who was the UAE's first foreign affairs minister and was assassinated when Omar was just six, he and his family sponsor a prize for Arabic literary translation. Omar himself is also an author who penned the successful book Letters to a Young Muslim, reflecting on what it means to be a Muslim in today's society. To hear more on the sidelines of the book fair in Sharjah, Inspire sat down with the thought leader. Ambassador, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you very much. We sit here at the Sharjah International Book Fair. Let me ask you what's been your key takeaway so far? Uh, I had the good fortune to uh, be moderating a discussion with uh, the Nobel Prize winner Orhan Pamuk, and it's really uh, a remarkable um, uh, opportunity uh, to, to have something like that, somebody of that caliber uh, in the Emirates and the Sharjah Book Fair. Talk to me about truth as a writer. How much freedom do you feel that you have as an Emirati when writing about politics or even religion? I pose the question of, uh, you know, how, uh, how much should a writer stick to the idea of uh, speaking truth to power? and whether, as a writer, it might be a better idea to speak uh, some truth to power and a lot of truth to oneself. There are pragmatic considerations. Uh, if you want to continue being a writer, a writer tends to be uh, kind of... can be stigmatized uh, and, and labeled in certain political environments. So I think, you know, uh, there's... Uh, truth can come in doses. In my career, politically, I've had complete freedom. Um, however, you also have to think about the social norms and the kinds of uh, questions you're posing. I don't have an ideological point of view. I, I personally had nothing uh, to, uh, no specific uh, theme to beat people with. Uh, on the contrary, I was interested in um, using my, the book that I wrote uh, as a means of kind of gauging people's interest uh, in these questions, to find out whether the questions I was posing were also posed uh, by society. Mm -hmm. And in, in that sense, I found that the response has been very positive. The book we're referring to is Letters to a Young Muslim, and of course you did tackle taboos, you did want people to question, to, to provoke a conversation. So what is the key message that you hope they got from that book? Living with uncertainty. Mm. Living in a world where we don't live in close societies, we live in interaction with uh, other people, other faiths, other languages, uh, and technologies that change the way in which we interact with each other, which shock our sense of identity. And so, uh, so how do you live in, at peace with yourself and with your, in, in your community without having to define yourself as, uh, according to a checklist of qualities? Mm. This was written for your son, so tell me, what did he make of it? What was his critique? Uh, he was 15 when I wrote it, and I'd, I'd, uh, uh, he did what all uh, good sons would do if uh, faced with not just a letter, but a series of letters. He said, thanks, Dad, I'm going to do something else, and when I'm ready, I'll read it. Uh, 
So <laughs> he has read it. There are parts that, that touched him very deeply and, and upset him, where I refer uh, in, in my letters to my memories of my father. Mm -hmm. um, and there are parts that, you know, haven't quite sort of gelled with him because he's living a different experience. You mentioned your father who tragically died in 1977. Tell me, was the process of writing a cathartic or a painful one for you? It was uh, very painful. And uh, that's partly why I insist on, on continuing to do it. And I recommend writing as a, uh, as a, as a form of therapy for everybody. I cherish the, uh, the passages that I wrote about my father, and I feel that I crystallized some of the key emotions that were uh, hounding me over the years. Ambassador, let me ask you, what are you currently reading? What am I currently reading? A lot of books on Zen, to be honest. Are you feeling very Zen? I am feeling very Zen. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, a lot of uh, Stoic philosophy, uh, Marcus Aurelius, uh, uh, I'm reading in, in, uh, in English and in Arabic. Let me pick up on philosophy, because that dovetails with an upcoming project for you. Tell me why. Given the history of the word philosophy in the Arab world, that's a very sensitive topic to broach. Mm. So I'm now considering, with a couple of other people, of putting together an introduction to philosophy in Arabic where it actually ties in directly with young people's concerns. In your current position as Assistant Minister for Cultural Affairs, you're flying the flag for the UAE abroad. So what message are you keen to take to foreign shores? I am exploring uh, a lot of what we're doing in the UAE that is not necessarily known. Uh, I think we have a tremendous amount to show the rest of the world about how an, a government in our very, very tough region is working on uh, enriching the lives not only of the citizenry, but also of the, the residents. The Middle East is a place of, of, of poverty, mm. of uh, desertification, of water shortage, of war, mm. of, uh, of terrorism. And yet there are some amazing uh, things going on, and that's what we want to we wanna also spread. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Instilling a love of reading in the young is a key long-term objective of the UAE authorities. And there's one institute in the capital which is putting literacy at the forefront of its ambitions. Salima Saeed has the story. Illustrating what youngsters respond to is Emirati children's book author, Meitha Al Khayyat, drawing up the main character of her next picture book, Umi Moza a grouchy woman who lives in the desert, eats beetles, and gets in trouble for meddling in her neighbor's affairs. The writer and artist of more than 160 books says children want reading material that speaks to them. They have antennas. They would know that if this book was, uh, for, uh, that the whole uh, purpose of this book is to teach them instead of entertain them, and then they'll definitely throw this book away. Starting out 10 years ago, Meithat says there were only a handful of Arabic children's book authors in the UAE. Creative books were mostly in English, she says, taught at international schools and later translated into Arabic, with much lost in translation. In 2009, the mother of five started telling stories about Emirati culture to her children, which led to her first book. When it got published, uh, and I saw the feedback from the school visits that I've been to and uh, the reaction of lots of people towards my stories and the, the cultural ideas that I presented, but in a very humorous and... Um, uh, simple way, this is when I discovered that, okay, I, I, maybe this is my role to write children's stories, but from my perspective. A case in point is her popular book, Mom's Amazing Socks, which teaches young readers about the days of the week and about modest dress, under the veil of a colorful story about a mother who wears quirky socks for different occasions. Maitha also hosts reading workshops for children, which she says it's critical to encouraging better reading habits for the future. While high literacy is an essential building block for children, it's not all they need to succeed in today's world. That's why some institutions in the UAE are looking to redefine what it means to be literate in the 21st century and take learning to the next level. Taking education three stories high is the Abu Dhabi Children's Library, which opened its doors in September filled with about 35,000 books. With big books, small books, no books, and piles of pageless books projecting on the ceiling, the library is looking to pique the curiosity of youngsters in a variety of ways. Adding a twist to traditional story time, children are also able to tell their own animated stories to develop their critical thinking. This is fun because like, you can create your own thing like a movie, but like it's a toy movie kind of thing. All this is meant to equip the little ones with the tools to navigate the real world when they get older. 
According to a PwC report, 60% of CEOs surveyed said that educational institutions in the MENA region were not equipping students with workplace skills. The study also pointed to students in the GCC failing to meet standardized testing in some areas, including literacy and maths. Tackling the challenge with young children, this library developed 11 interactive learning spaces created with the input of young ones themselves, who expressed an interest in areas such as robotics, virtual reality interfacing, and developing their presentation skills, like aspiring lawyer Scarlett Roberts, who's making her case in support of female rugby players. I thought a library was like just the kind of place, just like a bar borrow a book, but now I know you've got like all this technology and stuff, I'll probably come more often. Librarian Michelle Hackwell runs the 5,000 square meter center of knowledge and teaches a variety of coding and programming workshops, which she says should be more commonplace in libraries. How do you make informed decisions? That's a form of literacy. There's visual literacy, decoding images, finding symbolism, meaning. There's multiple. So we, we try to teach, the, give the children ways to think, ways to filter information. Despite the importance of preparing youngsters with the advanced skills of tomorrow, which remain ever-changing, Michelle says she's more keen to encode the love of learning, whether through texts or tech. Well, that is a wrap of our show from Sharjah. We hope that you enjoyed it, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Speaking of which, here are some Instagram posts that we especially liked this week. Literary agent Norman from Turkey picked up a copy of Labyrinth by Burhan Sermes at the Sharjah Book Fair. UAE resident Elena from Russia says her children love the music classes in Abu Dhabi Children's Library. And Sarah from Lebanon says the Children's Library in Abu Dhabi has the wow factor for her little ones as they learn to read.